Hello, Sawyer here. Welcome to Real Numbers, a weekly show about discovering math by considering problems from real life. This week, we've got a probability problem about the first card game everyone learns, war. We'll consider the first move in a game of war. A move in war is called a battle. Two players have shuffled decks of playing cards and each flip over their top cards. Whoever has the highest card wins the battle and collects both cards for their deck. In the case where the ranks of the cards are equal, say both players flip over a six, a war is declared and both players must deal out three more cards for their war and then they battle again from the top of the remaining deck. Whoever wins this battle wins all 10 cards that have been flipped. For the sake of this game, we'll say that if the second battle is also a tie, the players flip a coin to decide who wins the 10 cards. Card game enthusiasts will notice that these wars are the only way for a player to lose an ace that's in their deck. You meet Clara and Damien playing war with a deck of playing cards, but they've come up with their own balanced version. To make sure no one starts with an advantage, Clara gets all 13 clubs and Damien gets all 13 diamonds and they leave aside the other 26 cards of the deck. Then they shuffle up their decks and start battling. The problem of the week is, what is the probability that Clara wins Damien's Ace of Diamonds on the first move of the game? To solve this problem, we need a new method of calculating probabilities. We've discussed that to compute the probability of the AND of two independent events, we multiply the probabilities of the individual events occurring. If the two events are not independent, we can use the following more general formula, true for any two events, A and B. The probability of A and B equals the probability of A times the probability of B given A. This last term, read the probability of B given A, is the probability that B occurs if you assume the event A occurs. Let's look at an example. Say we are rolling a fair die, and event A is, we roll an even number, and event B is, we roll a number greater than three. It's straightforward to show that both of these events have a one-half probability of occurring. We get an even number on three out of six rolls, and we get a number greater than three on three out of six rolls. To compute the probability that both events happen, we use the formula probability the roll is even and greater than three equals the probability the roll is even times the probability the roll is greater than three given the roll is even. For this last term, Given we rolled an even number, there are three possible outcomes, each with probability one-third, two, four, and six. Two of these are greater than three, so this term is two-thirds. Therefore, the probability that the roll is even and greater than three is one-half times two-thirds, or one-third. Note if we had naively assumed these events were independent, we would have miscalculated this result as the product one-half times one-half equals one-fourth. Since the true probability of the AND of these two events is greater than the naive calculation you would get if they were independent, we call these two events correlated. We'll talk more about correlation on later episodes of Real Numbers. For now, use this new formula to help sort out the probability that Damien loses his Ace of Diamonds on the first turn of the Game of War. Now on to solving the problem of the week from last episode, a link to which is in the description below. We wanted to know the likelihood that three yellow taxis would arrive back to back to back in a row of six cars in a city where half the cars are yellow taxis. Just like the first probability problem, we can find this answer in a few ways. A computational approach is to fill out a table car by car, keeping track of the probability we arrive at each new car with zero, one, or two taxis in front of it. So let's build up a table of probabilities as we look at the six cars in the line from front to back. The column of this table is the position of the car we are inspecting, from one to six. The row is the current number of consecutive taxis, including the current car we are looking at, except for the bottom row. This last row represents the state in which we've already seen three taxis in a row. Let's see how to fill in the table. The first car has one half probability of being a taxi. So upon inspection, we have either seen one taxi in a row or no taxis in a row, each with probability one half. At each subsequent car, if we see a non-taxi with probability one-half, we get sent back to the top row, whereas if we see a taxi, also probability one-half, we move down one row. The only exception is the bottom row, which is sticky, in a sense, 
that any amount of probability that ends up here represents a chance that we've seen three taxis in a row, and so we want to keep it there. Now we can fill in the next columns, and we can check that each column adds up to 1 to make sure we haven't lost any probability. The final result we want to know is the bottom row in the sixth column. This is the probability that when we get to the final car in the row of six, we have at some point seen three yellow taxis in a row. Filling all of this in, we get the final result of 5 sixteenths probability that this happens. A second way to compute this, which is a bit quicker, is from the inside out. Note that any set of three consecutive cars contains either the third car or the fourth car. So we can first check those two cars. Here are the cases. A quarter of the time, neither one is a taxi, in which case there won't be a set of three taxis in a row. Half the time, exactly one of the two middle cars is a taxi. This case is symmetric, so let's say that the third car is a taxi and the fourth is not. Then the only way for three taxis to be in a row is if they were the first, second, and third cars. So this case has a one quarter chance of having three taxis in a row. A quarter of the time, both middle cars are taxis. In this case, all we need is for either the second car or the fifth car to be a taxi. The chance of this happening is the probability that the second car is a taxi, plus the probability that the fifth car is a taxi, minus the probability that the second car and the fifth car are both taxis. That's one half plus one half minus one quarter, or three quarters. Therefore, summing over the cases, the total probability that there are three taxis in a row is one quarter times zero, plus one half times a quarter, plus a quarter times three quarters, or 5 sixteenths. Agreement with our previous solution. Woohoo! Okay, I'll leave you to get solving on the new problem of the week. What is the probability that Damien loses his ace of diamonds in the first turn of war? Submit your answer and show your work. Also, if you have mathematical thoughts or extensions, or questions of your own you'd like to see solved, submit those on this page. The most thought-provoking submissions will get responses and shoutouts in later episodes. See you next time on Real Numbers.